Hi, welcome back to Midnight Med. This video is on erythrocytosis or polycythemia. Erythrocytosis is when there's increased red blood cells and they're formed in the bone marrow and we have this quick diagram here just to explain the origins of each of the bone marrow cells. So you have your initial blood stem cell which can differentiate into either a myeloid stem cell or a lymphoid stem cell. Red blood cells come from myeloid stem cells. And then you also have platelets, which come from megakaryocytes from myeloid stem cells, as well as white blood cells, which can come from myeloblasts from the myeloid stem cell progenitor line, or also from the lymphoid stem cell progenitor line. And the different types of white blood cells, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, which we won't go into here. There are different causes of erythrocytosis and primary or secondary causes. Primary is polycythemia vera, which means there's an increase of red blood cells, but not due to a previous cause. Secondary is there is a distinct cause. This can be physiological, for example, from carbon monoxide poisoning, heavy smoking, or altitude at high altitude. And this is because the body thinks they need more red blood cells to take in oxygen and bind oxygen to hemoglobin but this is not possible for example in carbon monoxide poisoning because carbon monoxide binds more strongly than the oxygen but despite this the body tries to produce more red blood cells there may also be respiratory diseases such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease pulmonary hypertension or sleep apnea there may be inappropriate EPO production Kidney causes are common, for example, renal cell carcinoma, which is actually a perineoplastic syndrome, um, as well as polycystic kidney disease or post-kidney transplant. Cardiovascular rare causes Eisenberger syndrome, where there's a shunt in the blood, and there's an opening between the left and right atrium. For instead of moving from high pressure to low pressure, it actually moves from low pressure to the high pressure, so it moves from right to left and this is due to long-term atrial septal defect. Other perineoplastic causes include hepatocellular carcinoma. Signs and symptoms relate to increased red blood cells and the subsequent high red cell mass and viscosity. This can lead to hypertension and subsequent angina, congestive cardiac failure and clots. You can also get headache, dizziness, tinnitus and visual disturbances. On examination, the patient may have splenomegaly with or without hepatomegaly. And this is because there's increased red blood cells and they have to go somewhere. And the spleen is the organ that stores blood. Um, they may also have facial and palma plethora due to increased red blood cells and everything just being a bit more red. They may also have signs of thrombosis because even though there are more red blood cells, they're of worse quality and hence are more likely to cause endothelial injury or turbulent flow leading to clot formation. Investigation, so you want to find and see that there are increased red blood cells as well as increased hemoglobin or hematocrit. You biopsy the bone marrow because remember that's where it all stems from and you see trilineage growth, so erythropoiesis as well as granulopoiesis and megakaryopoiesis, so they link to the white blood cells which we didn't go too much into detail. The may also have a genetic mutation such as the JAK2 gene and those three points are part of the major criteria. Minor criteria include um, you do a serum EPO to differentiate primary from secondary causes with the secondary cause being high. You can also do investigations looking at the underlying cause. Complications include hemorrhage because there's so much blood it's got to go somewhere so you can go out the nose um, epistaxis petechiae as well as gi bleeding thrombotic complications due to reduced quality of the red blood cells as there's also increased cell turnover you can get hyperuricemia and subsequent gout and you can also get myelofibrosis which we do have a video be sure to watch that for more information on myelofibrosis thank you for watching i hope you learned something if you did please tell a friend who may also find it useful